Hey everyone, there was a developer stream today where there are some pretty big scaling announcements, um, depending on how you view it. Uh, so I wanted to do two things today. Uh, discuss the scaling changes and how they're going to impact the game yet again, even though it hasn't made its way to Xbox or PS4 yet. And uh, I also wanted to go over first uh, some, some of the questions I asked the developers during the stream. Uh, because I think they're at least interesting. Uh, so we're going to start with the two questions I had during the stream. One, again, there's big uh, scaling changes still occurring on PC, and are they going to delay uh, the console release because of this? Um, you know, I'm not the only one who obviously asked this question, but we did kind of get a deflection. Um, there's going to be, supposedly, an announcement later this week uh, concerning the release date for Xbox and PS4. Now, why would you have an announcement when you've already announced the release date? Well, it's probably because it's getting pushed back. Uh, that's the reality of the situation. At the last developer blog, the one before this one, uh, the, Thomas Foss basically said he had the power to do that. Uh, if you know anything about the Microsoft Sony certification process, usually you have to submit a build and then you can't make further edits and give them time to work through it and give their stamp of approval before it goes. So it looks like the whole thing's been pushed back. Um, again, why would you have an announcement uh, about something that's already been announced unless you're going to delay it? Um, you know, the conspiracy theory <laughs> people out there are going to say, well, that first announcement wasn't really, uh, you know, was more like a targeted goal date, I guess, because usually, again, if you know anything about the way uh, releases have gone before, I believe their targeted date was June 11th. Usually the calendar never extends past that on Xbox and PS4. Um, and here we have, you know, an event that starts on June 11th, okay, but then an event afterwards, right, the big anniversary, uh, six years. Uh, so people are going to say, well, maybe they never even intended to hit that initial date. So if you're somebody who just wants the game to be playable, that's good news for you. If you're bored out of your mind and you're willing to accept anything new, no matter how broken it is, maybe that's bad news for you. But I would fully expect uh, the release date to be pushed back at this point. Um, you know, we'll have to wait a couple of days here to see uh, what actually happens. But that's where things seem to be trending. The other question I asked was something that kind of developed over the course of the stream, and it concerns um, events. Thomas Foss was basically asking the community, okay, what player events do you guys want to see? What do you enjoy? And there's actually kind of an event going on right now on PC. Um, if you're an Xbox, PS4 player, you might not be aware, but there's the Watcher set, an artifact weapon set that's currently in-game, and uh, nobody's obtained it yet because it's supposed to be an Easter egg or a mystery. And so basically the developers have came in and said, well, if nobody solves it within the next week or so, uh, or nobody makes progress, we're going to start giving hints so that people solve it. And if you're an Xbox or a PS4 player, you're sitting here kind of saying, hey, where's our chance to solve it, right? There's a couple of streamers on Twitch, you know, who are happy to test out your theories, uh, you know, and let you participate in a different way. But it's not the same as, you know, trying to solve this mystery uh, yourself so it's kind of this big event people have been working together theory crafting doing all the stuff it's new and exciting but only a third of your player base is actually interacting so my question i proposed to him is the next easter egg type thing the next hidden uh in-game you know uh hunt however you want to riddle uh, whatever you want to call it would you be willing to put it in the game as an event or time period and then have everyone participate at the same time. Because I think that would be a lot of fun. It'd help kind of bridge the gaps uh, between platforms if you saw people working together, you know, posting theories and doing that stuff instead of just the largely, you know, the PC community doing it now. And I understand why they would have to kind of give hints uh, towards this because the reward they put in this one is an artifact weapon set. Um, which will probably and most likely be invalidated whenever the new mod drops. So if, you know, people don't get it soon enough, well, then it's just another worthless item. That's kind of the th same problem they had with the Tales of Old here, 
is you know before people even got the rewards you know the uh, scarf the belt you know because it's a year-long thing they've already kind of made them useless which they said you know they're probably going to receive a buff later on the road but it's the same kind of principle is that your reward uh, you know during these hidden easter egg things um, if you were going to do it for the whole community should be something with a bit of uh, lasting power uh, that's not going to immediately be invalidated all right so on the scaling stuff i'm sorry if you were only here because you wanted to hear a scaling discussion uh you know i came out as anti-scaling very very early on uh in the preview stages you know when there's still a month of preview uh for things to be changed and done i know a lot of people jumped on the anti-scaling bandwagon whatever uh you know a week or two right before it launched on pc and not that that's a bad thing i know a lot of people had good intentions they thought it would be fixed so they didn't comment on it until it was clear that it wouldn't be fixed and that the problem still existed. But, you know, I've been anti-scaling for a long time. Uh, so the biggest changes that they currently announced, they had a full list. But one of them is that campaign zones will no longer be scaled. Uh, so that's why I'm standing here in Dreadring because uh, I want to go to here. You know, there's what? 40, 50 people in all of Dreadring right now on Xbox, but in their initial conception, you know, they want to make campaign zones more challenging, but then give better rewards in terms of being able to get your boons. But the reality is your endgame players didn't need the rewards. Uh, where's my campaigns? You might notice there's a lot of check marks. The only place there isn't a check mark is the PvP campaign because I can't find people to fight me in Conalgrim. The queues just don't pop and there's not enough people in Icewind Dale for me to go get triple kills regularly without intentionally setting it up, which isn't a good use of my time. But I don't need help <laughs> completing campaigns. They're done, you know, for an endgame player. So you were making these uh, leveling zones intentionally hard for the new players coming in the first time and they're basically getting beat up and getting dissuaded from playing the game or getting disheartened. Uh, so it was a bad idea in the first place, again. Um, you know, multiple people have said that. But they've backed off the idea of scaling in, uh, you know, leveling zones, basically old campaign zones. Uh, so the other part is, okay, I showed the Xbox numbers here, you know, just randomly. You know, most players play the game they spend a majority of their time in the actual dungeons uh, so what is going to be done for scaling in dungeons well there was two announcements on that front one was um and he wasn't very clear on this he said they were raising the scaling what i think he meant by that is they were raising the intended uh the intended item level that you're scaled to so in past streams, he's talked about that their current system scaled you to 12K and they wanted you to be at 14K. So I think they're raising that intended value of a 14K to even higher. Um, he didn't provide a lot of details on that again. Uh, there, there's actually a third thing. So uh, the second thing was enchantments. And this is really big because um, they announced it as a scaling um, player balance type change, but it's really a big economy change. So what was happening was, is, uh, my bags are horrendous, I apologize. What was happening was that the thing that was being most downscaled was your enchantments. Um, and players were correctly, correctly telling other players, hey, don't bother ranking up your enchantments, because when you're downscaled, you basically get none of the rewards for ranking them up. You got a very bad investment. Um, if you decided to rank up your enchantments in the current system that's live. So they said that they're putting back more power into these enchantments. They're not going to be as affected as hard by the downscaling formula. And that has major impacts on the economy. And I think this is really why they did this change. Because what really drives the economy is ranking up your enchantments. The thing that they sell you you know, their major AD sync in this Wanderous Bazaar, it's not Scrolls of Identification, which don't even exist in Mod 16 anymore. It's not Potty 
or party poppers. You know, it's these marks of potency here, which are an AD sync for the game. But if people don't have a reason to rank up their enchantments because they're downscaled really hard, then the AD all of a sudden doesn't sync out of the game the same way. You know, one of their main sellers in the Zen market is, of course, you know, your coal wards, your prez wards. But if there's no motivation to rank up your enchantments because you're not getting stats out of them, then, of course, the Zen market doesn't flow. The exchange, you know, functions differently. One of your main reasons to run dungeons, and it's been this way for... Can I not even access the trade house? I don't know. I can't access the trade house right now for whatever reason. But uh, one of the main reasons that you're supposed to run dungeons is to go get ultimate enchanting stones. You know, the game's kind of evolved that way for the past year because they keep putting that as the big reward that you're supposed to chase. But if you're not supposed to... If you're not getting power out of your enchantments, then what's the point? Uh, so they're bringing back power into enchantments, which is a good move and I think had to be done because of the economy. Honestly, I think they undervalued the economy impact of what they did in the first place and now they're starting to realize it so they're changing back to that the other change has to deal with player or not player monster health so they're reducing monster health by another 10 percent now this originally if you're not familiar with um the whole way preview unfolded which i know not everybody is not everybody participated in it not everybody had access because, you know, it's a PC thing. Um, there was a patch that went undocumented. There was no patch notes for it, just a forum post. Um, but there was a patch where basically every encounter in the game got nerfed. And at-wills were supposed to be buffed because they wanted to make at-wills a bigger part. And as part of that whole compensation package, they reduced monster health 30% originally um you know i understood why the developers were doing it because basically the easiest way to balance it is to have everybody hold you know i'm talking about my controller here but right trigger you know right mouse click whatever you want and then it's very easy to balance you know just a static holding only using one ability so i understand why they wanted to promote um at will gameplay and make it a bigger part of the game and a bigger percentage of your overall player damage because it's harder to balance, you know, players using a wide array of any given ability available to them at any time. It's harder to balance, you know, all the uh, unique kind of pathways that somebody can take in a rotation, in a full rotation. So they cut down on having options. But of course, player uh, actual experience suffered because of that, you know not having the options, having to sit there and wait for abilities to be available, not having a real choice in your rotation. So I understand why they did it. I disagreed with it, um, but I understand from their viewpoint why they thought it was a good idea because it made the game easy to balance at the cost of, you know, playability, at the cost of enjoying the combat. But they said that uh, now their intent is to lower monster health, make things easier to quick, easier to kill, make a dungeon go more quickly, and it should help your AP gain, uh, because when you kill monsters, you generate more AP, and then, so your dailies should get a little bit of a boost. Again, I'm not going to comment on the final details, because, you know, it, it's kind of a package deal. They're moving a bunch of pieces again all at the same time, and whether or not it ends up at a good result you know, we're not going to tell. They said the patches might not all come at the same time, so it might only be a portion of these balance changes in one patch, another portion in another patch. So it looks like we're just going to have to wait and see, you know, another two weeks, another three weeks maybe, uh, what all unfolds, you know, whether the actual end result is fun, playable content, whether it's challenging, whether it's not. I don't know, but that's kind of where the game's at, um, you know, from the developer stream. Again, those were my thoughts. I wanted to start with, A, my two questions that I've found important. A lot of the times I try to speak up for the council players uh, during those, uh, during this whole event because, you know, so much of the focus is on Mod 16 and what's going on PC that, you know, the council players are just kind of, 
you know, left off in the corner wondering what the hell's going on or does any of this apply to them. And the other things were the actual scaling changes, um, you know, how they've impacted the game already, how they could impact the game in the future, you know, some of the economy being tied into it because they didn't really talk about that during the stream. But I think that's a huge part of it, especially with the enchantment changes. So hope you found it interesting. Um, maybe I'll come out with another video uh, this week too. Uh, if you guys want. But anyways, thank you for watching.